All right, people, we're going to start by talking about something that is very specific. I studied this in college during my third year in an animal physiology course where we actually tried to dissect these little tubules called malpifian tubules out of cockroaches. It was totally awesome and disgusting at the same time, but it's very specific and you have to learn it now um, in grade 12. So the Malpifian tubule system is an example of osmoregulation in bugs. So to make this more meaningful to you, you should try to understand already how osmoregulation happens in humans. So obviously we use our kidneys and it's a very complicated process you should have gone through and you should understand how we're trying to excrete urea while trying to keep all the things in our blood. And so our kidney kind of uh, filters the urea out while doing all these active transport mechanisms to keep certain things like uh, glucose, like certain types of salts from actually leaving every time we go pee pee. So we want to make sure that everything's balanced. And that's kind of what osmoregulation is about. So keeping our osmotic tissues, not allowing us to lose too much water and helping us to get rid of water when we have too much of it. while all at the same time, trying to get rid of this waste product of protein breakdown. So the Malpifian tubule system, we're going to look at it in detail here as it relates to arthropods. Here's a side section through some kind of bug. Uh, you can see you've got the head, you've got kind of the thorax and the abdomen. This is the general path that food takes going all the way out. And you can see there are these little tubules here that are called Malpifian tubules. So we're going to label some of these things. Head, thorax, midgut, hindgut, rectum is the last place where everything goes out. That's the general abdomen. And we talked about those being the Malpifian tubules. Here's an image showing what cockroach tubules actually look like. Uh, if you ever find a cockroach and feel like you want to dissect one of these things, if it's already dead, don't kill it for the purpose of doing this. Um, and then maybe you can do a little bit of research. So there's a little size kind of bar to let you know how big we're kind of talking about. Here's a close up image of something like this. So if you, you know, we're going a little bit closer. This is actually one of the Malpifian tubules just drawn for some understanding here. Um, the Malpifian tubule, there's this liquid called hemolymph, which is kind of the equivalent of blood, basically. And the blood is going to carry this uric acid, and it takes some of the ammonium ions, and we're actually going to try to convert these ammonium ions into uric acid for actual excretion. You should remember that we are secreting, sorry, excreting urea while well, these kinds of bugs and arthropods are excreting uric acid, birds also use uric acid. It's a method to help kind of um, prevent extra water loss. So let me just point out these things. I'll refer to this diagram as we look at some of these points. So I mentioned hemolymph acts as blood in arthropods. The waste product we mentioned is uric acid. These branches that are coming off are called malpifian tubules. Um, ions and uric acid are going to be actively transported into the lumen of these tubules. So here you see ammonium ions coming in. They're getting converted to uric acid. And then the uric acid, we expect it to hopefully flow all the way out. So actively transported into the Malpifian tubules to be excreted along with all the uh, food and stuff that needs to be actually pooped out. Um, Water is going to follow through osmosis, so this is part of the osmoregulation. So besides the ammonium ions that are being pumped in to be converted into uric acid, you also have some sodium ions and chloride ions and other ions that are being actively transported in. And if you remember from the human comparison counterpart, whenever you have ions that are being pumped to one side, this is going to make this inner lumen here more salty, which is going to make water follow by osmosis. And so that is part of the osmoregulation part where we don't allow too much water to go out because water will follow and it'll balance out by moving to where there's a higher solute concentration or where water moves to saltier locations. So this point is saying some ions in water are reabsorbed in the hind gut. So once we get back to here, down to these areas right here, a lot of these, uh, a lot of the water is going to be drawn out to follow the salts that have been pumped into this area as well too. Uric acid is going to go all the way through. We're not trying to reabsorb uric acid back into the hemolymph. And uric acid is the stuff that's the poisonous stuff that's the result of protein metabolism. For us, it's urea. So this is basically it. It's kind of a small application 
but very detailed. I told you I didn't study this until I was in, in college, and now it's part of the IB diploma program, higher level biology syllabus. So to be able to recognize this word, Malpighian tubules, there are not a lot of examples of questions for the IB exam because this is pretty new stuff. But if you understand the application here, um, understand this term, Malpighian tubules, understand the concept of osmosis being used to help us retain water as water gets pumped to sorry as water diffuses to areas that are more salty um hopefully this isn't too confusing the same basic principles apply there's just a different structure we're not using a kidney we're just using malpighian tubules it's a very fun word to say malpighian malpighian malkovich malpighian